Hi everyone. Welcome to today's 12D Tech Forum 2024 Director's Cut webinar. My name is Lisa Stewart. This webinar series is designed to highlight some of the amazing content we wanted to include in our face-to-face -face event earlier this year, but which just didn't fit into the programming. Some presentations you'll see in this series were left out entirely, and others had to be cut short because we had too much content, which was a great problem to have. We'll be running these webinars until that excess material is exhausted and recording them for posting on our YouTube and Vimeo channels with links through our website. Our previous webinars from this series and those from our other webinar series are available online if you missed those. During today's presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way as shown on the screen and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. Then at the end, I'll read out some of your questions to the presenter if there's time. Today's webinar, 12D Model and Google Earth, will be presented by Rodney Burns from Extra Dimension Solutions. This webinar will delve into various methods and examples for exporting data from 12D Model to the Google Earth environment. The release of 12D Model 15, along with valuable user feedback, has led to the development of enhanced tools that empower 12D modelers to effectively present technical, civil and surveying data to non-technical audiences. This presentation will highlight practical use cases, demonstrating how surveyors, drainage engineers and civil designers can seamlessly export project data while maintaining comprehensive metadata. This ensures clients can easily explore and gain deeper insights into project elements. Over to you, Rod. Thanks very much, Lisa. So let's just jump straight into 12D version 15 right now. This project I've actually set up and you can see the exporting that I've got and the examples I've got are actually going to be running through a chain. So no problem with actually running these options through a chain to build your project data and exporting the data out. So to start off, I thought start with something simple, exporting some contours, pretty simple stuff. You can use the range file, obviously, to color the contours up. That should all be pretty well straightforward to you. But you can see the 12D or the new panel that we've got here for writing the Google Earth files out. We've got our data selection method up the top. One thing you will need to know is the projection for your project. Um, so you can invite a, a survey friend along to give you a bit of a hand there to tell you where your job is. And there's a couple of new elevation modes. So there's a bit of a discrepancy, I guess, in the older version of this panel to know exactly which one to pick or which one was the, the correct one to use. So these have been rewritten. So the choices or the modes that you have really match much more closely with the Google Earth options. This is the sort of the more towards the, the Google Earth naming convention. So you can actually look those up and find some information on the net about which one to select. Or of course, you can read the reference manual also. It'll also be explained in there. So absolute, I guess, makes sense in terms of contour data that you've generated off your triangulation, your DTMs. And if we were to write out this file, absolutely the Z values you had for the contours would be the levels for the information. So let's open up our KMZ file and have a look. Google Earth, this is probably the best bit where you get to zoom around the world. And I'm going to jump into Queensland. Over the border we go into our project site. So you can see the data here. Now because it was relative, if I turn it side on, some of those contours or the DTM are showing up, but in some areas the Google terrain is actually above the strings. So therefore the Google terrain is showing and our strings disappear underneath the terrain itself. So the problem with the relative, I guess, is that yes, they've got heights, but if the height actually happens to go under what the Google terrain determines is the height of the, the terrain there, then that will take precedence and we'll lose the Z values. So probably what we would want to do is actually clamp it to the ground. And this will then clamp it to the Google Earth terrain. Again, if I write the file out, replace that. Now, one thing you will notice as well with the new version, how much quicker this actually writes the data across. And I'll just revert that. And you can see now all the contours come up. Even the, the text labeling's come up in now. And you can see those contours everywhere. So that's exactly what we wanted. Yes, they're not now, I guess, the, the correct Z values in some spots. If you do click on the string, it will tell you the Z value itself, but it has it has now actually placed those onto the Google terrain. So that's just one example. I just wanted to quickly show you that. It's quite, quite easy to do. Another one would be to, again, a lot of clients um, look at doing this. We can do this under design, estate lots. Actually, 
create a range file based on the areas and then actually label those up, put the areas in. And this is a quite a new option as well with 12D with a different couple of the new um, text border formats that we have and are available to you now in version 15 as well. So I've got a couple of labels in there and I've also got my legend there and we can also write this out. So here we go. Again, I'm going to clamp it to the ground, sort of makes sense to do that and write out the lots. Open up the file and I'll turn off my contours. And you can see there, we've got the lot information. And yeah, excellent. The super strings have come across, no problems with the fill colors. Our text has come across quite nicely. Again, all colored up really nicely the way you want. But the only thing that's a little bit odd probably, possibly is our legend and what it's done with the wipeout color that, or the view color that 12D set there. So obviously Google Earth don't have a, a view color as such, like what 12D has in terms of making it the view color and the wipeout. In, on a raster image that you can you can definitely show in 12D, there's no problem there. So you will possibly need to pick, and I guess the, the question was whether do we pick black, or do you pick white, or do you pick something else? And in, in my case, I'm just gonna change the, the fill string there to a shade of gray, not white or black, of course, go for something different again. So yeah, there's no problem with doing that, filling the string in, or filling the, the, the super string in with the color there and setting that. And obviously when I write out the lots now, replace the file there, that would become the new background for the legend, no problem. Now the other thing you will notice is that the text that we sent out was drawn as fast text mode. Now when you first open the panel, um, it's quite possibly that you actually have the fast text mode as set to being on, it's on by default, but it's grayed out that you don't actually have an option to turn it off or on. It's beyond definitely by default. And unless you have this open SCAD software, it's a free software that you can load on your PC. Uh, but if you have that loaded, then you will actually have the option to whether you want to turn that on or off. Now, obviously turning it off, what that's going to do is actually send the, the text out, but it won't be sending it out as just single pieces of little line work, essentially. It will be sending them out and beautifying them a little bit. So it'll actually take the, the text out it will render them into 3D models um, and, and basically make the solids out of them, keeping the keeping the nice pretty format of all the text for you. It does take a little bit longer to write out. But once it's finished, again, we can open up Google Earth and come and revert that one. You can see I've got the gray background now. And now the text isn't just simple line work. Um, it's actually a little bit, I guess, prettier. But yes, you will pay for that in terms of the time that it takes to actually create that extra step. And, and render all these pieces of text for you to make it a little bit nicer to, to look at. There's some videos on how to do that for changes as well. If you wanted to do the change labeling, obviously you might want to make that one a little bit better, but by default, it will do the fast text mode. Now you might've noticed in Google Earth, flick back to quickly, that around the super strings, we actually get a border in Google Earth. That is also possible in 12D. It's just not set by default on your, any of your views. So by default, one of the properties for your view under the draw face edges, if I was to tick that box on, I'll get the same option inside 12D. That's, that's been there for quite a while. It's just not on the view by default. So you have to turn that one if you do wanna see the extents of your super strings, the polygons that you've got there. So again, a bit of an example of what you can do with some lots. Moving on for our drainage friends. Drainage network, beautiful. Got some catchment areas, some overland flows and TC lines all displayed and you can see our drainage network there. No problems again moving it and sending that out. This time I've got my data sources as a, a list of models. Again, I'm clamping that to the ground and I'll simply write that one out. Opening it into Google Earth. And I'll just turn off the lots. And excellent, there's my drainage network and my catchment area. So I can see exactly where my drainage information was. So you're loving that. It's pretty cool. The drainage networks come across. So those drainage strings has actually been converted to super strings and obviously draped onto the Google train because obviously the drainage network would be underneath the surface. You wouldn't see them. So that's what's happening to them there. So it might be the case that you actually wanna see the, the tri meshes or the, the pipe network as a 3D structure. So I'm going to do that now. The other thing I didn't send out was the house catchment. So the person who's drawn this up quite nicely has got some roof catchment areas. 
So I'm going to send this model out on its own into a, a Google file, but I don't want this one to be clamped to the ground. One of the other options I have here is actually relative to the ground. And obviously it sort of makes sense. And when I've done that, I can actually then offset this from the ground. So I'm going to make it five meters above the Google terrain and write the roofs out. And you'll see these red um, roof areas will then be sent out. So let me just open up that. And you can see there now those roofs are hovering just slightly above the Google terrain. Looks quite nice. There's another nice step in here that we've actually got extend sides to ground. Ticking that box on, writing the file again. Jumping back into Google Earth and reverting the file. Really cool. Those boxes are now transparent little red houses that we've just built there. So it's really quite nice and easy. Extending it to the ground will just make those tri mesh, sorry, those super strings filled basically go down to the, the Google terrain there. So that's quite nice. There was one other step that I've missed, uh, which was with these drainage catchment areas. When I sent these out, I also can, if we wanted to, we could export white as black. And again, it's, it's off by default, but if I wanted to, these white overland flow lines, I can write that out again, jump back into Google Earth and revert here. And you can obviously see the white strings have now turned black in Google Earth. Now, even though these are in two different files, I've got my roofs and my catchments, it's pretty easy in Google Earth just to grab the layer that you want or the model drag it down and place it into another file so that they're actually in one file together at the end of the day and send that to, you know, you can email that out to the client. So pretty easy to, to join them together again if you need to export them, you want to tweak them slightly for each one. But again, the drainage network actually is just clamped to the tin. So what do we do for the drainage strings if we really want to see those in 3D? Well, the first step would be to generate tri-meshes from our drainage network. We'd get a new network of models and that's the network of models. And again, all the attributes would go across. And that's what I'm gonna talk about now, I guess is once we've got in there, um, we could then either, it will automatically write all the string attributes. So now we've got all those um, pipe and pit attributes going across or vertex attributes. If you do have a group of attributes that you might've used the attribute manipulator for, then we can actually obviously just type in the name of that group, BIM, digital engineering or whatever you've used, and it will just take the attributes under that group and not all the string attributes. So if I write this one out, it will send out my drainage network as 3D trimeshes into the Google Earth file. Let me just open up that one and close these ones down. Now the network's obviously underneath the surface, so we're not gonna see that. So I just need to turn the terrain off. And now you can see very nicely for a drainage engineer is that their pipe network is actually floating in space. Probably you might catch the water up there, I'm not sure. But yeah, all the trimeshes have come across really nicely and display quite nicely there. And if I was to select one of them, all the pipe attributes have now come across. Now, normal, the 12D structure with pipe with the forward slash to make the individual groups, those forward slashes have just been replaced with a dot to actually come across into the Google Earth format. So yeah, there's no problem with sending out trimeshes to the Google Earth, they'll just have to be relative. They can't be actually attached to the ground. The other thing to note when you are sending out tri-mesh information is that you can only pick a KMZ file format. It doesn't really make sense to pick the KML. Again, KMZ is, the, is a zipped file format um, and it can, can contain one or more KML files or a lot more information in the, in the one file. So if you are sending out tri-mesh, you actually have to pick KMZ and it is the default anyway. So, there's some drainage information. For our survey friends, um, obviously we can send out some survey marks and also possibly some you know, utility surveys that you might've picked up. Now this one, again, I picked the marks, um, clamping them to the ground. And this time I've actually unticked hide the point labels. So by default, that one is on. I've just turned it off for this example. And what it'll mean is that the string names that I've got here will actually show up in Google Earth as well. So when I open that up, you can see now those labels for my, whoops, for my PMs and my survey marks, they've actually come across and they're being displayed automatically. If that was, un sorry, if it was tipped, um, you would you would still get the vertex there, but it just wouldn't have the name shown displayed automatically. So that's the, the hide point labels. Again, it's on by default, so they will be hidden. 
Um, you have to untick it if you want to see those ones. In terms of the utilities, yep, definitely one that could possibly clamp these to the ground. Again, a whole bunch of utilities. And what's been added and was actually requested by some of the users is if we actually can have some sort of a plot scale added as well. So this works very similar to the normal 12D plotting scale or the view settings. Obviously being at 2000, they're going to come out at this size in the KMZ file. Again, quite quick to write out those 2100 elements. It was quite quick to throw those out. So that's one of the things you will definitely notice. And there you can see all the services that have come out and the size of the text. The tech line styles come out there really, really nicely. Um, if you wanted to, we could definitely change the scale. 200, write that again. And that would be the same as what you would have been used to in 12D in terms of changing the plot scale on the view itself. So we can get those to, to interrelate if you want to. And we've used this, the same terminology there, so it makes a little bit more sense. Let me jump back here and revert this one. Happy days, there's all, the, there's all the, the line types as well telling you what the different services are. So quite nice there. So that's the survey people taking care of, hopefully giving you a couple of ideas of what's possible with the, the survey information. Nearly finished, I, uh, I guess the road designers, again, for the road designers, they're pretty happy, pretty used to actually creating the polygons again, being able to fill those in. Again, if you fill those in, we can write those out providing a pretty nice little format to be able to look at. And I'll just open that in Google Earth. And there you can see our road network there, clamped to the ground, PMs and services as well. So yeah, just turning these off if you don't want to look at them anymore. So yeah, we're pretty happy getting there um, quite nice with the in terms of the look and being able to visualize what the, the client wants to see. Obviously you could actually offer the client to actually install 12D View. It's also a free software that will actually just view your 12D project. They can do measurements, look at all your attributes, find the lengths of things, whatever they need to, offsets, all that sort of stuff they can do in the 12D View. And it's a free software as well. So you might want to offer that one to them as well. But one of the cool things that has been introduced into this version is something to do for our plotting or basically for, again, anything to do with uh, alignments or cross sections, you might want to filter these as well, but there's going to be a new option for you and it's known as sections to Google Earth description. So in this case, I've got my model of my alignments or my center lines and I need to pick my section type. In this case, obviously at long sections, we could pick cross sections and also drainage block parameter files for the drainage people. We Now I've just used one of the standard public works out of the 12D library. To, to process that and it runs through the, the alignments and basically does a plot of those. Now again, if you had have given them 12D view, you could have just created a view with what the plot looks like. But essentially picking that one, it's come to our long section plot. It's grabbed your standard plot parameter file that you might have set up. And we've utilized there. And it's one of gone and plotted it to a model. So what this actually does it goes and uses one of the new plotter types. We put it under other Google Earth section plot. And, and basically it does a plot to a model. You'll never see it. It basically does a plot to the model and it captures all that information and stores the attributes, or it stores the information back as an attribute on the center line itself. It's a, it's a step to do that. So that's what that does. It basically does a fair bit of information in the background. And what that means is when we come to write out the actual alignment string as well. So I'll go and write those out open it up. There's my center lines. Here's my model of center lines. Um, and if I still choose one of the center lines now, uh, this road here, great. I've actually plotted the long section into Google Earth. So you can see that in there. Now you notice that some of the things actually have been changed. The title block has been removed and there is a limitation, I guess, let me have a look at this one here, one of the other roads, that there is a limitation on how much we can actually visually see of the long section. So the pagination's been set at 150, and it might be that if your road's a little bit longer, that there's actually multiple sheets that you might be able to flick through to actually see the length of your road design. So that's the center line, and a really cool option that you guys have now got to play with um, of sending our plots out for long sections and cross sections and things straight out to Google Earth. It's, it's quite a cool option. Let me close these ones down. And yes, it 100% works for your cross sections as well. So if I bring these ones up, 
works the same way. You can do a model list again, picking your plot parameter file, and then we can and we can then write those out and clamp those to the ground. So as it does this, essentially it's put some attributes onto the cross sections or the strings, the long sections, whichever you're choosing to, to display. And it's called description is the attribute. And that's what 12D is then sending out into the KMZ file and is then actually then generating the plot information within the KMZ or Google Earth um, environment. So that's important to know. The other thing to note is when we're doing the plot, and as I said, we're using a new plot, plotter type, probably shouldn't have shut that down, but let me grab the cross section one here for you. As I said, there's a new one down here, Google Earth sections, it's using this one. It's plotting it to a model, and by default, we have set up, again, out of, out of the Torbity box, so this is installed for you, a PMF file, plotter mapping file, so that it will read this GE section plot full scale. So it's gonna map all the pens, all the standard PPF colors that, again, all the standard plot parameter files that 12D sh ships, and I'm, I'm talking about all the public work ones here, uh, for long section, cross sections, and drainage, they're all printed so that all the colors go to black. If you have other changes you wanna make, you just have to take a copy of this file, move it into your user or your customer user directory, uh, and, and manipulate it to that extent. But again, yeah, we can send this out open up and then actually have a look at some of the cross sections. So there's my cross sections down in Google Earth. And if I was to click on one of them, let me just select this guy. There it is. It's 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 crazy. It's really good that we we're actually able to plot this stuff straight out. All the tri meshes and the colors come across there you can see and, and it's all displayed quite nicely and you can then you know show and move from one cross section to the other and show your client what's uh, involved in your design. So again, really cool option for the new 12D users. I guess if you haven't used much of the, the Google Earth option before, and I hope that really helps you on your projects or gives you a couple of ideas or you can achieve with your project. Thanks very much. Back to you, Lisa. Thanks for that, Rod. And I think we've um, we've managed to answer the questions that were sent through during the presentation. If, if anyone has any others, you're always welcome to email them through or shoot them through now. Um, we'll be on for another couple of minutes. So the recording of today's webinar will be available in coming days through the webinars page on our website and on our 12D Model YouTube channel and Vimeo. Keep an eye on our emails and social media for details of future webinars, including the next one in this series, which will be Audi and 12D model on the 7th of November, so Thursday of, yeah, two weeks. And if you haven't seen it yet, the dates for the 2026 12D Tech Forum have now been released for July 2026. And there's a special discount available on tickets to that for a limited time. So check out techforum.com for details of that as well. And if you need to contact us in the meantime, we're going to pop some other contact details on the screen. These ones are a great uh, using for technical support. And our general ones are on here. So if you want to email us or check our websites or anything, that concludes today's presentation. And thank you very much for attending, and we hope to see you at future webinars.